All right, so you guys ever have those projects that you think are only gonna take you somewhere around a day or two, but end up taking a whole lot closer to a week or two? Yeah, well, that's me right now. So I thought that it would be the perfect time to do another episode of Ask DCF, an all Q&A episode. These are always fun, get to answer some of your guys' questions. We open this up to you guys over on Instagram, so make sure you're following us over there if you're not already. But let's go ahead and dive right into these. T Money Custom says, when doing portrait or character work, do you paint the background before or after? There's not really a right or wrong way for doing this, and you'll definitely see it done both ways. But for me personally, I like to always paint my background first, just so I can see a little bit of progress on the design and then have a little bit of forward momentum when heading into the hardest part of the entire process, actually getting to that portrait work or those really detailed character designs. I like to save all of that for last. Next up, Chris Custom says, what was the hardest part for you when barely starting to customize? The one thing that used to drive me absolutely crazy was just trying to find a working airbrush setup. I kept testing out different cheap airbrushes, different compressors, and this was also back when Angelus paint used to be much thicker and before they had a product like Too Thin, so I was pouring much thicker paint into much cheaper airbrushes. And anytime I had to do any airbrushing for any designs, it was always a total nightmare. So just having a good, clean working airbrush setup nowadays is definitely something that I don't take for granted just because it used to be such a hassle every time. Next up, we have Kasutomi Custom. What's the perfect matte acrylic finish and duller combo to get a really matte finish look no shine? So thankfully, there is a ton of great options out on the market for you nowadays. There's also no longer a need for duller anymore because these finishers will totally remove any shine nowadays. So I think that you really can't go wrong by using either the Matte Angelus Four Coat or the Matte Liquid Kicks Top Coat. Both of these are totally gonna get the job done for you. Now we have Andy Dowsett who says, what age did you start customizing? So I was actually 20 years old at the time and I just turned 30 recently. So hard to believe, but it's been 10 years. And anyways, I was heading into my second year of architecture school and being a broke college student at the time, I couldn't afford a pair of shoes that I wanted and those happened to be the LeBron 8 South Beaches. So I saw some other people online that were customizing and painting shoes. So I said, you know what? Let me go ahead and give this whole thing a shot. Geets13 asks, do you have certain design templates you use or is every design a one of a kind? So I don't have just one design template that I'll use for everything, but when it comes to customizing certain things like Jordans and specifically Jordan 1s, I do think that there are universal color schemes that can work for a lot of different themes. I mean, if we take a look at the bread colorway, for example, Jordan has released this pair in so many different colorways over the years by just swapping out that red and it always works because this is such great color blocking. I mean, you could swap out the black and red for any other colors, like if you're doing a Chicago Bears colorway, for example, if you swap that out for navy and orange, that's not a bad place to start if you plan on doing a Bears design. The Chicago colorway also features another great color blocking scheme that you could follow, but this is just a good place to start and then you can break the mold from there. Next up, Third World Customs asks, what are you looking to improve upon this year? One thing that I definitely want to practice at is really, really detailed airbrushing. I mean, I look at somebody like j -Bo Airbrush, for example, and I am just blown away by the work that he does. We got to chat with him about the pair of Mortal Kombat blazers that he did, and those were just one of the craziest custom shoes that I've ever seen made. He's also been doing a bunch of hockey mask for NHL goalies, so it's so cool to see his art really blow up. Bonnet Custom says, how do you keep your airbrush clean? I use proper paint and ratios, but it still clogs often. So the one thing that you didn't mention here that could be happening is maybe you're not straining your paint and sometimes clumps are gonna form within your paint, especially if you're used to ever working straight out of the bottle. If you ever pour the paint directly into the paint cap and work right out of there, sometimes clumps are gonna form, especially if you leave that paint to dry out over time. So I always recommend that you run your paint through a mesh strainer before doing any airbrushing. Also, another thing that I just started doing a couple of years ago is I like to leave just a little bit of airbrush cleaner directly in my cup so that nothing can dry out over time in between sessions. Wade Tiwano asks, do you still make any mistakes anymore, minor or major? So I think that mistakes are 1000% unavoidable, but great customizers are really good at avoiding the major mistakes 
and they're also really good at quickly covering up the minor mistakes. Little things like paint on the midsole or overspray here and there are no longer big worries when you've already cleaned them up hundreds of times. And with more repetition under your belt, you're able to avoid some of those catastrophes, like maybe you laid down a stencil or taped over a painted area and you peeled that up and all of your paint came with it, you know what you need to do beforehand so that those things never happen. But I still make plenty of mistakes all the time. You just get better at fixing them along the way. Next up, Summit Souls ask, do you still find a use for flat black or flat white paints with how finishers have evolved? Honestly, no, the finishers are so good nowadays that they can remove any sheen left behind from using that classic black or that classic white. But if you still have a bunch of the flat black or flat white paint laying around, you don't need to throw it away. There's just no real advantage to using them anymore in my opinion. Soul Heroes ask, what is the easiest way to add shadow or contrast? So what you really need to experiment with and just play around with a bunch is trying to find certain colors that you can use outside of just black to really add contrast or for that perfect shadow color because when you mix black with certain colors, like yellow for example, you're just gonna end up with this weird muddy color that you probably weren't intending to make. So sometimes mixing in certain browns or certain grays can help you get a much better color than if you were to mix in black. Next up, I Am Custom says, what advice would you give to some to make this a full-time gig? So anytime you're gonna be a self-employed artist and do something like this, it's so important that you truly love it because there is gonna be a ton of ups and downs along the way. You're bound to face a bunch of struggles, but when you're doing something that you actually love, there's nothing better than that. But something else that I've also been talking about with a lot of other artists nowadays is that you wanna try to find a way to generate income outside of just your commissions because there's only so many that you're gonna be able to do. So maybe you're able to create a product that could sell within your niche, Maybe you're able to monetize your content if you're starting to take that more seriously. You can hop on platforms like TikTok or like YouTube, and then you'll be doing two things at once. You'll be advertising your work, but you'll also be getting paid for the views. So I think that can be incredibly beneficial for you if you're trying to turn this into a full-time thing. Now we have Selfmade King who says, how did you go about getting the perfect size eyelet cover up on your Alexander McQueen customs? So anytime you're working with a pair of shoes that has those really hard metal or rubber eyelets, like a pair of Alexander McQueens or like a pair of Vans, what you wanna do is go ahead and measure the eyelets and try to be as precise as possible. You wanna get down to at least a 16th of an inch. If you can get to a 32nd of an inch, even better. But then you're gonna need a vinyl cutter because after we measure them, then we're gonna go ahead and load up some vinyl in our vinyl cutter and cut out some circles to that precise measurement. Then we can go ahead and lay those circles directly on top of the eyelets and then do all of our design work on top because eyelets can be a real hassle to clean up if you get a lot of paint on them. So that little trick right there will save you a ton of time. So that's it for me guys. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Ask DCF. That was a lot of fun. You guys always ask some really good questions and I really enjoy doing these. So please be sure to go ahead and give this video a like if you haven't already. Make sure you're subscribed and everybody get out there and just create.